live in fear. And we're not going to worry about what God's doing. We're just going to flow with it. And God's going to bless. Hebrews chapter 3 is where we're going today. Appreciate our amen corner. We've got great leadership in our church here. Kids pastor, youth pastor, ministry directors. One ministry director is back there serving in the sound booth. But I appreciate our ministry team, our leadership of our church. We're blessed at AFC to have great men that help us lead our church. Hebrews chapter 3 and 7. Are you ready for the word today? Let's see if I can get through it today without sounding like Kermit the Frog before it's over with. Or maybe Miss Piggy. I think she's worse. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, it's the New King James Version, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion and the day of trial in the wilderness. He's referring back to the wilderness where God's people went 40 years and they rebelled and they unbelieved. That's what it's referring to here. Don't harden your hearts as in the day of rebellion, the day of the trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you. Now we're talking about modern times. He uses that as an example of the Old Testament, and he ties it into now the New Testament church. This is a New Testament book written to the New Testament church, and it, the theme is, of course, about the Hebrews and the people of God in the past. And so now he's tying it in saying, but you need to beware. Modern day, current day church, you need to be careful lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another. Everybody say daily. This is why you need to be around people in the church. Because every day we need each other. Every, this is why you need your marriage to work. Because sometimes it's just you and your spouse. This is why you need you and your kids to work out and have faith. Because we need each other daily. Somebody say daily. And exhort one another daily while it is called today. Don't let today pass you up. Take advantage of today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Because that's what sin does. It hardens you. Did you know that if you don't pay attention to God and listen to Him daily, that you delay and that, that creates a sin and sin creates the hardening of the heart and it gets harder for us to get through to you. And people that ignored last week's message are harder to reach today. And that's why you're slowly backsliding because you don't take advantage of the right now. You think right now doesn't matter, but let me tell you something about not taking advantage of today. When you ignore today, you create deceitfulness of yourself, and you create a hardness of your heart, and it's harder for us to get through to you tomorrow. So not acting today hurts you. It literally hardens your heart. It layers up your heart to where it's harder to get through to you tomorrow. It takes a bigger car wreck. It takes a whole lot more pain to get your attention. And that's why, I don't know about you, but I want to take advantage of this moment today. I don't be so foolish to let today go by and just do this tomorrow. I want to be humbled and broken right here, right now. I want to get it all right, right here and right now. While I've got this moment before me, I want to take advantage of it. I don't want my heart to get hard. Verse 16, for who having heard, rebelled. Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom he was angry 40 years. Was it not those with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who did not obey. We've talked a lot about obedience in the last several weeks. Verse 19, so we, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. There is a connection between belief and obedience. And some of the reasons why we don't obey God is because we don't believe God. Because to obey God, there's a risk. I have to fight a giant and I might not win. So obedience is tied to belief, and the reason why some of us don't obey God is because we don't believe we'll win. We don't believe that God's plan is better for us. And that's why there's a connection here between obedience and belief. Show me how much you believe, I'll show you someone obedient. There's a connection to it. Faith is tied and woven into everything we do. Everything. And so that's why it says that. Now let me go to 2 Corinthians 6 and 1, just two more verses before we sit down. We then, as workers together, Paul talking to the Corinthian church, with him also pled with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Don't let the grace of God pass you by. Don't, don't let it be wasted. 
You've got the grace of God at your, at your disposal. Don't let it just be gone. Utilize it. For he says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Yesterday's not the day you're going to be saved. Tomorrow's not the day to be saved. Today's the day to be saved. Right now is the moment to get right with God. Oh, God, help us. Everybody say in Jesus' name. I want to preach today about the audacity of delayed obedience. And you can be, you can be seated today. I'm glad you're all here. The audacity of delayed obedience. Audacity is not usually a good word. Audacity is risk-taking. The audacity to do what you did. It's risky. It's bold. It's arrogant, the dictionary says. And that's what I felt today for us from the Holy Ghost is to tell you we cannot wait or delay the opportunities that God has given us in this moment. Because delaying what God is asking in this moment hardens our hearts in the next moment. And if you cannot go and run to an altar today, your legs will be heavier next Sunday. If you think it's going to get easier tomorrow, it won't. If you think that it'll be easier next week, it won't get easier. It only gets harder. And that is the importance of this message today. So let me just start by telling you that today is the day. And you can't be saved yesterday because of yesterday's holiness. It will not make up for today's sin. Yesterday's faithfulness does not make up for today's lack of submission to God. It does not matter that you've got memories of good things with God if you don't have a moment today. You need a moment every single day to stay saved. Many times we look backwards to find our salvation. We say, well, I had a good experience as a camp meeting or at prayer meetings back then or revival last year or yesterday I got up and prayed, I'll take the day off. The devil doesn't take the day off. Flesh doesn't take the day off. Sin doesn't take the day off. Every single day is a day to make sure I'm right with God. You see, you can't be saved tomorrow because of today's holiness. We are not once saved, always saved. If that's true, why are there blots in the book of life, in the book of Revelation? Why in the book of Revelation does it talk about people's names who've been blotted out? Because you can divorce. You can make an agreement and then walk away. You can make a commitment, be with God, and then change your mind. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, but that does not mean you can't leave or forsake him. And so we have to daily make our minds up that we're in this, that we're serious, that our hearts are still devoted to God. Today is the only day you can guarantee yourself to be saved. Today's the only day to guarantee you're going to heaven. Today, God's going to come back on today. God's not coming back tomorrow. He's coming back today. And if you don't come back today, tomorrow is today. That's why every day matters. That's why every day you wake up, you make sure you're right with the Lord. Today's salvation is not tomorrow's salvation. Just like today's marriage is not tomorrow's marriage. You're married one day, you're divorced the next. It's a choice you make every single day. And when you wake up tomorrow, you can't use yesterday's devotion or tomorrow's intention. Well, tomorrow it'll be easier. No, it won't. Delaying what God is doing now adds a layer of hardness to your heart. Does that not scare anybody? Has anybody not felt that maybe it's been three years since you've received the Holy Ghost renewal? Is anybody else not getting scared right now that you have recognized how long it's been and you think another service waiting will make it better? But the truth is, the longer you delay, the worse it gets. Pastor, listen to me, Pastor. I had a weak moment. I'm just having a weak moment. That's all this is, Pastor. Okay, that's fine. Just make sure it's not a weak pattern. 
or a weak lifestyle. It's okay to have a weak moment. They're rare. They're every now and then. They're out of the ordinary. But we say we had a weak moment every moment. We say we have weak moments every morning. We have weak moments every night. If it's every, it's not a weak moment. It's a weak faith. It's a weak devotion. And we've got to be careful because we dress things up with pretty words to make sure we don't feel like we're backsliding. Well, it's just a weak moment that I had. It's just a weak moment. But make sure it's not a weak lifestyle where you fall every time you're tempted. You see, some of us are just one temptation away from failure. You say, well, I did good today. It's because you weren't tempted today. The ugly girl showed up to work. Oh, you think you're holy because you had no opportunity. A lot of us were only holy away from opportunity. You don't know who you are until you're tempted. You don't know who you are until you have opportunity. Opportunity tells you a lot about your status and your faith. Well, I had a weak moment. No, you had an opportunity. Say it right. You were going to do it if you just had the chance or if you knew you wouldn't get caught. A lot of us are just waiting for a chance to do it without getting caught. As if we can trick God or hide from God. The one I'm worried about the most is the one who sees everything. Scared about your wife finding out. Scared about your husband finding out. Scared about your boss finding out. The boss will find out. The boss of all bosses. The king of all kings. The Lord of all lords. He sees everything. Furthermore, weak moments are dealt with daily. Paul said, I die daily, probably because of that. Yeah, we all have weak moments, and we know we have weak moments. And so what do we do to fight back against weak moments? Paul said, I die daily because I know me, I die daily. That means every day I wake up, I make sure the flesh is dead, my desires are set on God, and I am just as devoted today as I was yesterday that I'm just as dead today as I was. Yesterday's death is not today's death. Every day you wake up, you've got to look in the mirror and say, still not my will. There's going to be new challenges today you didn't face yesterday. And that's why every day is a day of salvation, a day to get right with God, a day to walk in truth. Jesus also said to pray daily. He said, pray daily. Give us this day our daily bread. Fill me up so I won't want this world, God. Oh, I'm weak because he ain't eating. You know why you're weak? You're not eating. I'm going to tell you right now, I know why you're having weak moments. Because you're hungry. Hungry people eat stuff they don't plan on eating. When I'm real hungry, I'll eat McDonald's. But after Thanksgiving meal, I'll throw up if you mention McDonald's. We're weak because we don't die daily, because we don't eat daily, because we don't get enough daily when we wake up to say, I've got everything I need now. I'm satisfied. I'm good. I don't need anything in the world. I'm strong. Where do you think strength comes from? From your nutrients. That's why Jesus said, pray like this. Give us this day our daily bread. Look what else he said. He said, forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. Every single day, I've got to make sure there's no traps. Make sure I'm not mad at anybody. Make sure God's not mad at me. Daily, we deal with this stuff. I'm not putting it off to tomorrow. Look, if somebody's mad at you, call them today. Text them today. Get it dealt with. What are you waiting on? Tomorrow's not going to be easier. The longer you wait, the worse it gets. And that's a truth. That's a proven fact. That's science fact. Gardens don't get better in time. Leave it alone and watch it. It doesn't get better. It gets worse. Anything you ignore and delay and procrastinate with, it naturally gets worse. You've got to be intentional and involved daily to protect it. Amen. But what about this, Pastor? What about slow growing? Because I just don't want to rush my walk with God. Or I'm still young in the Lord. I'm I'm still new in church, and I'm like, it's been four years. Four years. 
and you're still saying you're new, you're still acting new, you're still looking new, and that's how we talk, and we, we're, we're not right with God, but that's our language, that's our church language to feel better about us not being devoted. Well, I'm just new, I, I haven't been here long I've only been in church for a little while. This is all new to me. I don't, I don't know everything. But let me tell you this about slow growth. Slow growth is not technically sinful living because slow and steady does win the race. There's nothing wrong with one step at a time. But there is something wrong with using that excuse to delay what God is saying do today. Once it's been exposed, you either have to say yes or no. Now, here's what's cool about God. God will not expose tomorrow's mission today. God will only expose today's mission today. So God will not give you more than you can carry. God will not give you tomorrow's will for today. God will only give you today what you need to do today. It's not too much. It's not too hard. Whatever you feel God asking you to give up or do today is okay and right and should be done today. Not tomorrow, not put off to next week, not next year. Slow growth at the early stages simply includes immaturity. And there is such a thing as babes in Christ who have a new spirit, but you know what? They don't have a new one. They don't have new thoughts. Because you've got 30 years of memories 30 years of childhood raising, 30 years of bad in this brain. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you get a new spirit, not a new brain. You don't get a new body. You get a new spirit. Babes in Christ have the right intentions. They just don't know how to do everything yet. So just because you're a new person doesn't mean you get to sin. Well, I'm new, I'm still sinning because I'm new. No, you're not. No, no, there is no more sinning when you're walking in the light. There is immaturity. And what that means is, oops, I spilled the milk. I didn't mean to. I don't want to. It's not intentional. It's immaturity. And that's why you can still be saved and not be perfect and not look like you have it all together because you're immature. You can be full of the Holy Ghost and immature. And you can make a mistake, man. I didn't mean to do that. That's my bad. Here's how you know that you're immature and holy. You say, I'm sorry a lot. I'll get better. That's my bad. I didn't, I didn't know. I'm still learning. I, I would have done it if I would have known. And God knows it's the truth. That's immaturity and holiness at the same time. It's accidental, not intentional. We say, I didn't mean to. That's what we say. Well, I, Pastor, I didn't mean to. It's been 20 years in church, but I didn't, still didn't mean to. You knew better. But we say, I didn't mean to. As if not meaning to gets us out of judgment. But I didn't mean to needs to be real and not just something you say. Anybody can say, I did not mean to. But God will judge you on if you really meant to. You know, we say that to get off the hook. Usually we say that. You know, we never, we never say that to God because only God knows if you really meant it. But we say that to our spouses and to our kids and our boss. I didn't mean to. We're trying to get out of trouble. We're trying to get them to think that our intentions are pure, but we just keep slapping everybody at work. But I didn't mean to. Oh, well, it's okay then. You're, you can get away with it since you didn't mean to. But you can't say that to God. You can't say to God, God, I didn't mean to sin. Because God knows if you really meant it or not. Yeah, you can't do that. If you don't mean to do it, it will be a very rare occurrence in your life. It will be an accident. It will happen every now and then. Let me tell you something. If it's a pattern, you mean to do it. The devil is a liar and deceiver. Don't be deceived, church family. This is very important. If you do it a lot, if you do it consistently, you mean to do it. Now, you don't like it, but you're bound by sin. You don't like it, but you do mean it. Because we have the power with the Holy Ghost to stop it. We don't sin. We're not sinning people. And we say things like, I didn't mean to, and we delay salvation by making excuses. 
Truth is, we're not devoted, we're not sold out, we're not in submission. We're not obedient and we're not fully believing. And the longer we delay admitting it, the harder the heart gets and the longer it will take and more difficult it will be for you to be saved. Let's take advantage of this moment today and stop making excuses. Let me tell you about the slow growth attitude. Slow growth desires church and God and the Bible and holiness even when it doesn't understand it all yet. Well, I'm new. Yeah, but new people love going to church. New people love their Bible. Well, I'm new. That's why I don't love God. No, you love God a whole lot when you're new. It's like a first love. It's like somebody meeting their forever love. You got butterflies in your stomach and you got hearts in your eyes and, and you, it's your first love. And so don't, don't fall for the lie that says because I'm new, my love is just weak. No. No, your love grows in depth with maturity. You're learning what love really is, but the heart is still in love with the fullness of your heart. So let me show you about the slow growth attitude. Slow growth still wants to be at every church service all the time. You see, it's the desire to be close to God, not the knowledge of everything God is. If you truly are right with God and immature, you still want to be at every church service. And the fact that you can miss no problem is a sign that you don't mean to be there. These are small little ways you know whether you're serious or not. If you don't care about what's in the Bible, you don't have a desire to study it, this is the truth about your condition. Well, I meant to read it. No, you didn't. Because you could turn off Facebook and you could read it if you wanted to. Hey, today's the day we just we kill all the lies. Today's the day we break out all of the deception. Today's the day we expose the things we say to pat ourselves on the back for not truly being devoted to our God. I'm going to I'm just want to bring up all the things that I've said and you've said to make me feel better about my lack of devotion. Yeah. We've all said it. I've said all this. That's why I'm preaching about it. I know I get it. Salvation is about a pure spirit, not a mature mind. It takes time to get the mind of Christ. It doesn't take time to get the spirit of Christ. That's why as soon as you get the spirit of Christ, you, you start to grow the fruit of the spirit. And that's not logical. It doesn't make any sense. None of those are logical mental things. Patience is not mental. It's a spiritual thing. Love is not mental. It's a spiritual thing. It does not make sense. So you can have the Spirit of God and you can be saved and on your way to heaven and not have the mind totally understanding everything about God and His ways. And that's why if you're new and you're doing this right, you're enjoyable, enjoyable to be around, but you don't know it all. Because it's affected your spirit. It just pours out in you naturally, organically. A pure spirit is instant. A mature mind is progressive. The Spirit of God will lead and guide us into all truth. You may not know all truth when you get the Holy Ghost. But you have the Spirit of truth. And the Spirit of truth desires truth. The Spirit of truth wants more of the Bible. The Spirit of truth asks questions. I'm telling you right now, you don't have the right spirit if you're not asking questions about God. If you're not curious about God. If you're not asking about God to leadership, to those who have answers for you, how in the world could you say that you have a love for God? I don't think that's possible. Slow growth becomes more like Jesus year after year. So how long have you been in church? Think about that for a second. Are you, are you closer to God now or further from God? Are you more holy and righteous and know more of God's word? Are you further along now or are you not? Because I have seen, I have been there to where many people can go to church for a long time and be stagnant. And what they'll say is, I'm just going through a season. I'm just going through this moment of weakness. Hey, y'all, there's, there's wilderness moments and there's promised land moments. The wilderness is not meant to last forever. 
you're not supposed to stay in the wilderness your entire Christian life. It's a moment of death. Once you've died, you can enter into the promise. If you're not in the promise, you're refusing to die. Coming to church, but refusing to die. Hearing the preacher, refusing to die. Delaying devotion. Yeah, I know. Typically, typically, slow growth is really about ignorance. And seeking truth daily removes away our ignorance. And whenever you study God's word every day and you ask questions every day and you ask God personally in prayer, then you're no longer ignorant on the things of God. And when you're not ignorant anymore, you have a mature mind, you know things, you're wise, and now you're more powerful and anointed and you are more conquering things. You've got the armor of God, everything you need to win, and now you're more successful and you love your walk with God. And that's what happens naturally whenever you seek truth daily. You remove ignorance. Why would people not study, ask their leadership, and pray? Here's the number one reason why I believe people don't study their Bible. People don't pray and ask God questions and get revelation, and people don't ask leadership in church for answers. Because when you find out the answer, you can no longer claim ignorance that you did not know. And there is this weird spirit in this day where people love to play dumb. Yeah, the party started at 10. <laughs> Was it 10? I just... I, I didn't, I, I thought, I didn't know. Oh, you, I sent you a text and I sent you an email and I called you yesterday and I told you. Was it? I, what was I? I was doing the dishes and I had to, I just, we play dumb until someone calls you dumb. And then you're real smart. <laughs> Someone's like, you're dumb. No, no, I went to Harvard and Yale and I have a business and money and a it's amazing how all of a sudden we get smart when, it, when it's good for us. And we get dumb when it's good for us. And that's this weird, I don't even know if it's in the Bible, but it's, just, it's deceptive is what it is. It's manipulative is what it is. It's being someone other than what you really are is what it is. And it needs to be dealt with and called out. You're not dumb. Unless you're dumb. And if you're dumb, we probably already all know. And nobody has a high standard for you. So you're probably good. But listen, you can't pretend to be dumb because you like the freedom of ignorance. The Bible says there was a time when God winked at ignorance, but no longer. God no longer is going to give you a free pass because you say you don't know. With a Bible on every phone, every website out there, you can find it. You can translate it. You can read it. You can study it all day long. You can get a job from home now and spend the rest of your hours studying the Bible. You don't have to work the fields anymore. That'd be hard, working the fields all day and then trying to study the Bible. We got it so good compared to when they did back in the day. And yet we'll still say, I don't know, I didn't have time. And because I don't know, God, you've got to give me a free pass. And so we'll tune out the preacher because if we don't listen, we don't have to go to the altar. Oh, wait, the kids need me. There's a place in every mom's life where you've got to be so tuned in to what the God is saying to you that your kid may have to just go ahead and eat a cracker or something so that you can get a breakthrough in the service. We need to resurrect the days where you pass your kid to somebody so that moms get breakthroughs. Because I've seen mamas use their children for excuses to not have to pray through. What, what is going on today? We're revealing all of the things that the enemy could use. To hold us back. I don't want you ignorant. It's not the will of God for us to be ignorant. But, but we sometimes want to be ignorant. Because when we know things, we're accountable and we can't argue that we did not know. Well, some will say that I just won't study so that I can act like I don't know any better. But listen to this. Not seeking God so that you can claim ignorance is self-deception. You are literally deceiving yourself from having truth. That is one of the most wicked and perverted things you could ever do to harm yourself is having access to the Word of God and not studying it. Having access to truth and not seeking it. Yep. It's self-deceiving and evil, thus disqualifying you from salvation. Just the heart that says, I don't want to know because then I'll have to live it is the same heart that won't be saved. 
I mean, think about it for a second. I know a lot of people don't study their Bible, but why? Hard to understand. No, no, I don't want to hear that. It's never been easier to understand the Bible. There's different translations now. There's translations for dummies now. It's like step one, God's real. Step two, he loves you. Step three, he died for you. I mean, they've made it so simple now. And people are like, I don't understand the Greek and the Hebrew and all that. Why? You've got tools and Bible studies and apps and anything you could ever need to know about God's word. And yet people still say they don't know. I just think you need to ask yourself the question, why do I not have a desire to know it? Because to know it is to be convicted, and to be convicted is to stop making excuses. Well, now I know. You know what keeps me up at night? All the things I knew I should have done that I didn't do. That's also what keeps me repenting. That's also what keeps me coming back to God. That's also what keeps me recognizing I need him daily. Because his word I've hid in my heart, like David said, so that I might not sin against thee. We have to have his word so that we have knowledge and our minds mature and we grow up. Coming to church, not intending to change, is a wicked, lukewarm spirit. If you get up on Sunday and you come to church and your intention is not to receive something from God, then what in the world are you doing? I mean, you literally are getting dressed to go to something you're not planning on partaking of. Who goes to restaurants and just sits there all the time? And they say, what do you want? You say, nothing. I just want a table. I want to use your air conditioning, your bathrooms. You know, they got this rule now that you can't use the bathroom if you don't. Maybe that's because they're tired of people freeloading on the building. You know why they do that? Because they can't afford to keep the building open if people don't participate. Because that water costs money, that toilet paper costs money, that cleaning costs money. And so if you don't, if you don't invest in it, they won't let you use it. Sounds kind of logical, doesn't it? Yeah, a church can't maintain itself with ignorant people that refuse to come to church to grow and to change. We've got to have it. Let's go a little further. Not seeking... Healing from your past so that you can claim that you're hurt and become a victim so people will serve you is evil. Because you're literally denying healing because you like your sickness. Because your sickness gives you an easy path to have everybody serve you. Because you and I both know that if you're healed, you have to switch from those who get carried to those who carry. And because you have a lazy spirit on you, you don't want to be healed. In fact, you don't even have faith for healing because you're scared of your healing. You're scared of your emotional damage getting fixed. You're scared that you'll become whole because then you'll have to become an authority figure in the kingdom of God. And you would rather stay at a low place, which is not like your God or his spirit. Why do some people not want healing? Because they like it when they can carry yesterday's abuse to tomorrow's problems and say, you owe me because I've been hurt. Hey, two can play at that game. We could all go around talking about how much we've been hurt. But I got one better than all that. Let's talk about how much Jesus was hurt. Let's go ahead and just ante up. Let's go ahead and go the, the full. Let's maximize this thing. You want to talk about who's been hurt the worst? Let's talk about Jesus Christ, our God, robed in flesh and died for us. Now, how did he act when he was hurt? He come out, out of the grave with glory and power. He come up out of the grave with gifts poured out on humanity. He came out loving and giving and forgiving and, and shedding abroad his grace and mercy. Refused to be a victim. If anybody has a right to walk around getting mad at everybody, it's Jesus. You know what they did to me? They hurt you. Yeah, they hurt me. I don't deserve it. They stripped me naked. They cussed me out. They mocked me. They said I couldn't do it. He's not a victim. And neither are you. Get healed today. Get out of what you're in. Get your legs back so you can go get a job for yourself. 
get over everything that happened to you. Our God has the power to heal you from every past emotional damage. Everything been done to you, our God has the power. Do not deny the power of God just because you love the victim power. People tell me, they'll tell you, they'll say, but I've been hurt. And I'll say, let's get it dealt with. And they delay. And I'm like, why are you delaying? Let's get it dealt with. No, no. Either you doubt God or you love it. One of the two. Either you doubt God or you love it. I'm going to tell you how you know you had not got healed yet. You talk about yourself every time, all, all day long. You talk about yourself. Talk about yourself. You talk about yourself. You talk about your problems. And you complain. You complain about your problems. Yo, we're the head, not the tail. We're the people of God. We're, we're called, chosen, royal priesthood. Who are you? Why are you deceived, living in the past, living in sin? We're the people of God. All right, let me, let me hurry and get to my close. Delay is so dangerous. Let me talk a little bit about the audacity of delayed obedience to God. There's a difference in I'm taking my time to make my mind up, and I'm trying to have the best of both worlds. Some people come to church, they do need some time because this is weird. A bunch of people in suits, sweating down, jumping across the platform. Women looking like they're from the 1850s. And people are sitting here going, what's, I don't understand. Tongue talking, casting out devils. This is a little weird. We understand that. It takes time for some people to get around us and learn and see if we're biblical and legitimate. I'm not trying to rush you if you're sincerely wanting to learn. But there are other people who come even to this church who you have no intention in changing. You've been here for quite a while, and you're not growing at all. And something needs to rattle and shake your cage. Because you're playing with fire. Your heart is getting harder. And every day you delay growing in God, it's going to be worse for you. Who's going to say it if I don't say it? Because we're we're living in a deficit of truth where nobody wants to offend anybody because it costs us finances. And that's the number one reason why we don't say it. I'm going to tell you right now, the number one reason we don't say it is finances. Power, sex, and finances is the reason we don't tell the truth. Those are the three main things. People will lie and they'll hide and be deceiving for those three things right there. So who's going to say the truth? People not afraid of consequences. People that love you enough to get in trouble for you. Jesus did it all the time. They killed him for it. Only the people that love you the most are going to talk about this. If you think someone loves you and they don't tell you the truth, they don't love you. They love themselves. They're probably trying to use you for something. Oh, that's a powerful revelation for your marriage, isn't it? She doesn't love me anymore because she tells me the truth all the time. That's the truth. That's the way you know she does love you. I'm going to tell you how you know she doesn't love you. She's a Jezebel. She lies to you. That's how you know she's not a real woman of God and that she does not really love you. Truth is the way you know somebody loves you because truth costs me to say it to you. You think we enjoy making people upset? No, we don't. Someone's got to say it, though. And I don't know if you figured it out by now, but this is a church from this pulpit that we're going to say things that maybe you don't hear anywhere else. And, boy, we got to say it. You know why we got to say it? This is Austin, Texas. This is a liberal seat of evil and darkness. And if we don't stand strong, we will all fall in this city. We've got to fight against the darkness, push back against the darkness. We are not a compromising church. We're not a church that's half-hearted, half-devoted. We're strong in our faith, and we're standing for Jesus Christ. Let me out of hurry. People are like, I want my salvation and my earthly sinful pleasures at the same time. In fact, the churches that are growing the fastest right now, they're not churches, but they're churches where you can get drunk on Saturday and sing on the platform on Sunday. Those are the fastest growing churches in America right now. They're big, beautiful, have a ton of money, ton of talent, straight teeth. They look great. They all look like they're 15-year-olds in high school. They have the best shoes, best clothes, best haircuts. They're cool and they're relevant, and that, that's what everyone's looking for. They're looking for deception lukewarmness, half in, half out, a little truth, a little lie. That's what's popular. I know what's popular. I get it. They want marriage and the side partner. There are people that actually get married and have a side partner. They like the woman cooking and cleaning, and they like the other woman being physical. 
That's what we want. We want God to supply all our needs and do all of our laundry. And then we want to go have our party on the side. And there are people in every church that that's who you are. And nobody's calling it out. Nobody's saying anything. And you need to feel uncomfortable. You need to sweat a little bit. You need to curl your toes in. You need to feel it because who's going to tell you? Your wife's scared of you, sir. I'm not scared of you, sir. Your wife's scared of you. You're a boss. Nobody's going to tell you. You're a grown man. I'll tell you. The Holy Ghost will tell you. You can't fight God. I'm just trying to do what he says. I'm not against you. I'm not fighting you. But somebody has got to say it. And it ought not be just me. That's why I got these guys up here. Don't just stand with me if you ain't going to say it. Anybody can stand up when I'm preaching, but will you say it when I'm not? Why do I got to be the bad guy in church? Let pastor take that hit. I ain't saying it. I'll be their friend. Okay, Absalom. Go ahead. Let King David be the only one fighting. You be everybody's friend. That's a horrible spirit right there. If David gets his hands dirty, then we all get our hands dirty. If David fights, we all fight. If the leader says it's true, it's true. We're fighting together. We're unified together. We're standing together. That's how it should be. People want their children and they want their freedom to do what they want. Newsflash, when you have kids, your life's over. Oh, that's right. You wanted sex, but not kids. That's the problem. When you have your kids, you lose your freedom. Why are you mad? Stop being so bitter and sad and stressed out all the time. Enjoy them. Raise them. Love them. They're not a problem. They're a blessing from God. You can't have both worlds, church family. All right, here, here we go. Here, this is a big one here. And we'll close. It's easy to say we'll close, but I'll say it. It's by faith. It's prophetic. The longer we delay our absolute devotion in the face of grace, the worse our judgment will be. It's biblical. It's biblical. Our God is patient and slow to judge us. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. You know why I'm glad? Because I'm a preacher who's messed up. I've messed up. I've made mistakes. I've sinned. I deserve the worst condemnation. The longer you've been in church, the more you ought to be thankful that God is a gracious God. Because those of us who have been given the most grace, and then in the face of that grace, we don't live right. It's a sobering thought. I am grateful for the patience and slow judgment of God. I'm thankful he didn't kill me when I deserved it. You see, he is gracious and God is kind and God is merciful. But like the little kid who gets bullied every day for six years, at some point enough is enough. And he will get bigger than you and snap one day. Be careful who you bully. They might end up bigger and stronger than you. The longer it goes, the worse it will be. And the longer you delay answering God's grace, the more punishment you will feel. The example I would give to you is we allow more crime in major cities these days. Police get scared now to help because there's more crime on the streets and they're afraid of lawsuits. And so now because in major cities there are more uh, police who are afraid, they're actually police now that won't go into neighborhoods and make calls anymore because they don't want to get killed. I mean, can you blame them? If they try, they'll get sued. So we're paying tax dollars for police who are afraid now, not all of them, but some, to go get their hands dirty, and we're letting evil take over, and we're letting lawlessness take over. What's happening? People are buying guns to defend themselves. So now more and more people are buying guns to defend themselves. They're shooting people on sight because they don't know if the police will show up and help them. In fact, police can't get there for five minutes. Maybe that's the fastest they could get there. If you live in the country, you better, you better take care of yourself because they ain't going to be there for quite a while. And we're living in a day where it is getting worse. You know why it's getting worse? Because we're delaying the judgment. And anytime you delay judgment, it all gets worse. It all ends up deadly and destructive. 
Noah, God used a flood, but later the promise is I will never flood the earth again, but here's what I will do. I will have a fire eternally throughout the entire earth, or I will have a fire. Everything will burn. There will be hellfire. First was a flood. Second is an endless fire. It gets worse in the end. We are the generation of grace, and we will have to deal not with a flood, with a fire. The flood was come and gone. The flood was here and gone. The fire will never end. Why is there a fire attached to the people of grace? Because you will have to pay the price of all the love of God you've rejected. You see, it makes hell hotter knowing that God has loved me so much and I have rejected him. Hell will be as hot as grace was good to us. And we will deserve it. Everyone that goes there will deserve it. Because he has not given to us what we deserve. Why are you delaying? Why are you delaying? I know why you're delaying because you're not in hell right now. You know how many people will be repenting in hell? Begging for an altar in hell. But you'll know deep down how many times the preacher with tears in his eyes said, get right right now and you remember how many times somebody said you better get right your wife said to you you better go to church you better submit to pastor you better how many times you remember every warning every grace every mercy over your entire life every time mom and dad said don't act that way Young people, hear me. Every time you had the chance to go to church, every time the youth pastor said, we live this way, and the youth pastor's wife warned you, and everybody warned you, and YouTube warned you, and preachers warned you, and your whole life you've been warned, and God said, I'm not going to kill them. I'm not going to take them to hell. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to be slow to judge. And We delay because there's no judgment today. But this is not the day of judgment. But it is coming. You know what some people need? They need to burn before they repent. Isn't that sad? But I'm going to tell you what ought to make you want to repent today and get right with God. It's that he has not let you burn. You, you have a chance right now to run to an altar before your heart stops. Before the stroke happens, before the car hits, before the cement truck hits the bus. Which just happened right down the road. Before the mass shooter shows up at your mall like it did in Russia, where over 100 people were killed the other day. You have a chance right now, today, to make sure things are good between you and God. And he didn't kill you yesterday. And he didn't let you go yesterday. And the sickness that should have took you out yesterday, it didn't take you out. And COVID didn't take you out. And we're sitting here going, no, no, no. I'll wait till tomorrow. And we will, we will go into eternity staring at grace and we won't wonder why we're in hell and it won't and it won't be weird see we say we can't believe god will let people go to hell but those people won't know why they're in hell you see you think it's wrong that god will let someone in some tribe in the jungle but see you don't know the dreams that god sent to that man in that tribe in the jungle you don't know the visions that god sent you don't know the missionary that tried to come and they killed him you see you don't know everything that god did to save them you just think everybody's ignorant and nobody knows but you don't know our god is gracious and just and his arm is outstretched and he reaches across the nations you don't know but they'll know Every sermon will replay in your mind in hell. Every sermon, every thought, every memory will come flooding back. Every chance you could have gone to the altar, but you chose to walk out the doors and go eat again, thinking, well, I'll wait till I have cancer. Well, I'll wait till I need it. Well, I'll wait till tomorrow. And every time your heart begins to harden. Why do we have to suffer? Why do we have to have pain? 
why can't we just be thankful that God hasn't done it yet? After all my sin and all I've done wrong, after everything I knew better and I didn't and God didn't take me, you think, I'm going to just sit here today. There are people in this room right now, the Lord sent me here to, to hopefully shake you. And you're, you're not, I'm not talking to new people. You're new. You're working it out. Keep going forward. I'm telling people that you've been in church for a while and you're nothing like God. You're nothing like the Bible. And you think that sitting there and walking out like you normally do is going to make it easier the next time. I'm telling you, every time you reject God's grace, you put another layer on your heart. And it is harder to get through. The day I come to preach truth to you, hopefully to shake you up, hopefully to get you stirred to see the truth that maybe you're not where you need to be. We need to take advantage of this moment. We need to take advantage of this moment. Forget about tomorrow. Forget about yesterday. <laughs> this is the day of salvation. This is not the day of judgment. This is not the day. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Wow. Look, if you're good, then you're good. Great, good for you. You're praying every day. You're right with God. You're treating your spouse good. Everything's good. Then great, pray for us. But there's a lot of people here right now. It's not good. It's not right. You're not devoted. You're not where you need to be. And you have a moment today to say, I'm not leaving this room until I'm ready and I'm good. And we're going to go further than that. Tomorrow when you wake up, today wasn't good enough. Some of y'all are going to get prayed through today, and tomorrow you're not going to change a thing. Tomorrow you're going to have to get up and do it all over again. Every day you get up, it's a day of salvation. Every day you wake up, it's a day to repent and say, God, I'm going to serve you. Every day you get up, make your mind up, be intentional. I'm still married. I'm still devoted. I'm still locked in this thing. I want you ministers to, to come down here across the front and get ready to pray with people. And... Uh, some of our other ministers, local evangelists in our church, preachers, that uh, if, you, if you work in outreach or something, licensed ministers, come down here. And uh, we're going to have some altar call today. And we're going to get people ready to meet Jesus. Anybody else like me hearing all the chatter about the eclipse and the end times and all that? Anybody else hearing this? Am I the only one hearing the chatter? How things are lining up. How the, how the eclipse is lining up over Egyptian city towns and how it ties into prophecy. It's buzzing all over. Elon Musk wants to, he's right now during trials to put Neuralink chips in the brain in human beings. Happening right now. The Lord's coming back. And there's a higher probability he'll come back in the rapture before you die. There's a higher probability that we will see the rapture than you will die. And you think, I don't have a cough, I feel good. That's no way to measure. We're going to pray today. This is going to be an old-fashioned altar call where people come up here and say, I want to get right with God. I want to make sure I'm right with God. Maybe you're right with God and you just want to double down. I'm going to tell you what I would do if I were you, if you were right with God. I would say, I'm going to get a double dose of God. I'm not, I'm not playing games with this. I'm not going to take a chance with this. I'm going to go down the day. I'm going to pray. I'm going to lift my hands up. I'm going to repent with tears in my eyes. I'm going to say, Lord, I'm strayed from you. Lord, I've gone too far. Lord, I've played games. I've gone to church, but I really could care less. I've made excuses. I've said stuff like, well, I'm going through a storm and a tough time, and it's a weak moment, and I've made all kinds of excuses, but I'm not right, and I know I'm not right. Only you really know. But if you're here today and you just want to make sure you go to heaven, Today's the day of salvation, not tomorrow. And if there's a question in your spirit that you're not ready, go while you can. Get right with God. Let's all stand together in this place. If you want to start coming, come down here. Our ministers will pray with you. 
Some of you ladies that are in ministry, come down here. Your, maybe your spouse is in ministry. Come down here. Lift up your hands. Let's start praying in the name of Jesus. Let's repent together. Everybody come down. Let's repent together. The Lord's coming back soon. If you're half-hearted, if you're busy with work, busy with life, but you know you're not a devoted Christian, you know you're not all in, sold out, then today's our day. Today's the day of salvation right now. That's it. I'm ready. I want to be renewed in the Holy Ghost. Don't leave the altar until you've been completely refilled with the Holy Ghost, until you're renewed in the Spirit, until everything impure in you has been dumped out on the altar, until every thought, everything you've got is brought to captivity in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Lord, you're coming back soon, and I want to be ready. Whatever it takes, Jesus. Whatever it takes, Jesus. I want to be ready. Whatever it takes, Father. I want to be ready. By the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, I want to make sure I am ready. If you feel good, then get even better. If you feel right, then just go further. But God, whatever it takes, i got to be saved. Lord, I trust in you. God, renew in me the right spirit. Purify my mind and heart. You see what I've been doing with my time. You see what I've been doing with my phone. You see what I've been doing with my spirit and my gossip and my, my mouth. But, Lord, I repent today. I turn to you. I want my relationships right. I want my heart right. I want my kids right, my family right. Today's the day of salvation. Today's the day to receive the Holy Ghost. Today's the day to repent and turn to Jesus. This is not the day of God's wrath. This is not the day of the judgment. This is not the day for you to go to hell. This is the day for you to escape hell. This is the day for you to escape hell. Everybody has a chance today. Everybody has hope today. Everybody has hope today. Oh, God, I surrender all. Oh, God, we surrender all. Oh, God, we give all to you. Oh, God, we give all to you. Turn this place into a prayer room. Turn this place into a... I'm not waiting anymore. I'm not waiting for tomorrow to treat them right. I'm not waiting for tomorrow to start reading the Bible. I'm starting today. I'm not waiting on tomorrow to treat them the right way. I'm doing this now, 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 now. Now is the time. Now is the time. Come on, everything you want for me, Jesus, I'm submitted to you. Everything you want for me, Jesus, I'm yours. It doesn't matter what it takes. It doesn't matter what I got to give up. I'm yours. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's it. Receive a renewing in the Holy Ghost. Receive a renewing in the Holy Ghost. Come on, that's it. Let the Spirit of God be renewed inside of you as you begin to speak in other tongues. Make sure God lives in you. Make sure your thoughts are right. Make sure there's no chains of bondage on you. Make sure there's no sin in your life in the name of Jesus. Let every young person be renewed in the Holy Ghost. Every child renewed in the Holy Ghost. I want to be healed today. I want to be right today. Only free of sin today, free of temptation today, free of the works of the enemy today. Come on, I said you ought to grab your family's hand, lift it to heaven, and say, We're going to get right with God. We're going to get right with God. Let somebody hold your kid and get to praying in Jesus' name. Grab a hold of somebody that needs a breakthrough and shake them and say, let's pray until you're renewed in the Holy Ghost. Let's make sure we go to heaven together holding hands. Jesus is coming back for the church. Soon and very soon, we shall see the King. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm free of sin. I'm free of the enemy's works. I'm prepared, I'm purified, I'm washed, I'm sanctified by the blood of Jesus. I will hold nothing back today. I leave it all at the altar. Come on, he's worthy of it. He's worthy of my surrender.
I said, I hear you talking in tongues. Let's get louder. Lift up your voice and declare it in Jesus' name. Speak in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Be absolutely filled with the power of the Spirit of Jesus. I may not know everything in my immaturity, but I'm going to have the right spirit. I'm going to be saved.